Hey guys, welcome to the Filmora music video series. My name's Johnny, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at doing your first draft for a music video. As the editor for the music video for Blau's song, Tokyo, I'll give you guys some insight on how I tackled this edit in Filmora Pro. Now, before you start editing, it's really important to back up and organize your files. We made a video about this last week, which you can check out, link in the description. In my case, I backed up onto two external hard drives. I put one of these hard drives away while I used the other one as my main project drive to edit on. Speaking of editing, let's get started in Filmora Pro. You should always try to ask your cinematographer about aspect ratio. This is because a lot of cameras won't necessarily shoot the aspect ratio that the cinematographer is framing for. So as a result, you might need to crop or letterbox your edit. Alfonso mentioned the 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio, which means that the frame is 2.35 times wider than it is tall. We could add a letterbox effect onto our clips, but what I often like doing instead is changing our project settings to always crop the frame to that aspect ratio. Most of the clips that we shot on the camera we used were 3,424 pixels wide, which is a little under 4K. Since we know the width of our frame, we can use math to get the height. So if our frame is 3,424 pixels wide, we can times that by one high over 2.3 wide, which is our aspect ratio. This formula will give us how many pixels high that our frame needs to be. So we can first begin by canceling out the wide here and there, which will leave us with the equation 3,424 pixels high divided by 2.35. This roughly equates to 1,457 pixels high. So let's click on this gear icon here and set our project to 3424 by 1457 pixels. We shot in 23.976 frames per second, so we'll make sure that we set our frame rate while we're here. You might notice that our footage looks really washed out. This is because we shot with a flat color profile. This allows the camera to preserve more detail in the highlights and shadows, which will be useful in the color grading phase. What we're gonna do now is something loosely called assembly. This is when we begin dropping our footage in and getting it in order. This process can be both daunting and inspiring since it's a blank canvas that you're starting with. The good news is you can start by getting some guidance from your director. When I started editing the music video for Blau's song Tokyo, I made sure to grab a copy of our director Kevin's treatment. So let's begin by dropping our music onto the audio track. If your music video has shots of a band performing, I would recommend dropping those in first and sync them up with the song. But since we're doing a narrative, I'm gonna start by getting our first scene placed first, which is these few shots right here. I've got this ultra wide shot of our lead at the bus stop, a side angle medium close up, and a shot from inside the bus when the doors open. One way to start the first scene is to open on a wide shot and then punch in on a tighter shot of your talent, like this. And this totally works, the scene plays out logically. But Kevin and I decided we wanted to start on a medium shot and cut to the wide shot on the first note of the song for extra impact. This is also where we plan to put the title. I'm going to put some placeholder text in there for now, since we'll be looking at adding a proper title later. Finally, I'm going to give all of the shots in the scene a color, so that the scene is easier to distinguish later. You can do this by pressing any of the numbers on your keyboard while highlighting your clips. So, now I'm going to start placing the rest of the scenes. If you're having trouble figuring out where to start, I recommend dragging the wide shots of your main action in first and seeing how those pace with the song. I'm also gonna highlight these scenes with their own colors. One thing that I found that worked was whenever the drop came in, that's the part right after the buildup, we'd cut to one of the memories outside of the bus. One thing I should actually bring up is that we shot some of these scenes mirror image to how they actually look. This was mainly for logistical reasons since we set up to mainly only shoot on one side of the bus. Here's a clip that we need to flip. 
I'll go to the controls panel, and under transform, break the chain icon and set the X scale to 100%. Whether it's for your director, client, or producer, you'll probably eventually want to send off your first draft for review. As editors, we can sometimes feel like perfectionists. We just try to keep working on the project to get it perfect. But before you put too much work into your edit, it's really important to show it to somebody else so that you know that you're not wasting your time with something that your client or director might not want in the video. A cool trick that you can use for drafts is that you can add time code on top of your video. This can help whoever is reviewing your video to give more accurate timing info on revisions that they might want. We can do this by going to our media panel and clicking on New Plane. We'll make sure that our plane is transparent and we'll call it Timecode. Next, let's put the plane on the track above the rest of our edit. And we'll go to the Effects panel and add the Timecode effect onto it. I'll tweak the settings to my liking, and then we should be set to Export. Let's set our in and out areas with the I and O keys and click the arrow beside export. We'll add the in out area to the queue and I'm going to create a new exporting preset. For first drafts, you don't need anything fancy. Having a lower resolution and more compressed file can actually make sending it to the director or client a lot easier. In my case, I'm going to select MP4. For dimensions, uncheck use source and set it to 1920 by 1080 and everything else here should be good to go. We'll call it 1080p draft, and we'll select it for our export. So, those are some tips for editing your first draft. Next week, I'll be going into how to add some extra polish to your edits. Thanks for watching, and remember, there's no limit to what you can make.